Hello students, this is Mr. Gillespie welcoming you once again to my YouTube online learning channel. In this video, part 2 of a series, this video specifically created for students of third form, grade 9, who are being introduced to CXC Geography. This is a follow-up video of an earlier video called Continents and Plates Theory and Introduction. In this video, I will now be going into details, telling you what I understand the plate tectonics theory, which was preceded by the continental drift theory what these two theories are all about. Keep in mind that this is telling you what the scientists have proposed. So if you have difficulty accepting or believing in these theories, it is quite easy to simply say, according to the scientists, this is their theory on how the earth came about in terms of continents and oceans, mountains, volcanoes, etc. So this is all a theory you can accept, you can reject, but this is explaining what the scientists tend to believe and have proposed since the early 1900s coming forward into the 1960s 1970s until presently in the year 2021. So to begin, let me introduce you to a video. In the early 20th century, the German scientist Alfred Wigner noticed that the eastern coast of South America and the western coast of Africa fit together nicely, almost like two pieces of a puzzle fitting together. Then Madagascar fit nicely around the side of Africa, while parts of India seemed to have a place as well. Despite heavy criticism, Wigner went on to publish the book The Origin of the Continents and Oceans in 1915, pushing the concept of what he called Urkontinent, meaning supercontinent in German, except in a 1920 edition of the book where, for a single time, he called the land the Pangaea of the Carboniferous, coining the term from the Greek pan, meaning the entire or all, and Gaia, meaning Earth. Of course, it was the Latinization of this word that became the more common phrase now, Pangea. And today, Pangea and the larger theory of plate tectonics are more or less common knowledge. Okay, so we begin our study with a German scientist by the name of Alfred Wegner. We say Wegner in English, but properly his name should be Wegner because it's German. So this German climatologist, someone who was versed in the study of climates, as you can see on the screen, the background to him coming up with the theory of continental drift is from the basic idea that he thought that the continents of South America and Africa, as you're seeing on screen behind him, seem to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and so he came up with the thought that if these continents seem to fit and they are thousands of miles apart then in his mind the continents were once together and have moved over time so he came up with the idea that there was in the past, millions of years ago, according to his view, one large supercontinent where all the land masses, continents and islands and everything fitted together and he called that original supercontinent, in his theory, Pangaea. As you saw earlier in the video, Pan meaning all, the prefix Pan mean all, 
and the Gia, the suffix meaning earth. So he came up with this theory and he tried to explain what he thought might have happened at the time that the continents breaking up over millions of years from one landmass called Pangaea into two groups of continents. The group to the north, which today will include North America, Europe and Asia, he called Laurasia. And to the south, the group of continents that would today be South America, Africa, uh, Australia, Antarctica, etc. He called Gondwana land. Gondwana land. And so he did studies which he felt would support this theory that the continents broke up gradually over time, or millions of years according to his view, and drifted to their present positions. So this in basic terms is what he referred to as the origin of the continents and oceans, or what we today call the continental drift theory. So that was Alfred Wegener in German, or Wegener in English. So he thought that some anywhere between 200, 250 to maybe 300 million years ago, the continents broke up from Pangaea, P-A-N-G-A-E-A, -A, Pangaea, or P-A-N-G-E-A, -A, if spelling can vary, broke up, and today we have the continents. So Pangaea, meaning all Earth, broke up, became the two groups of continents, Laurasia to the north and Gondwanaland to the south, further breaking apart to form the continents as we know them. So there was his view um, in the early 1900s of how continents and oceans came to be. And it all began because he thought that the continents of South America and Africa fitted together, their coastlines could fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And of course, he went about searching for evidence and he felt that the evidence was strong, the coastlines fitted together in his view Fossils or the remains of living things in the rocks on both sides, the eastern coast of South America, the western coast of Africa, he found fossils or remains of living things in the rocks that were similar. And of course, other evidences which you saw introduced in the earlier video, introduced the introduction video, to this topic, he felt that there were strong evidence to support that these continents were once together. And so from this basic idea of two continents fitting together and seeming to have been once together, he then broadened his viewpoint that that means that all the continents were therefore once together and broke apart and as they drifted apart the oceans expanded between them to what we have today. So that basically was Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift. And when he presented this theory to the world in from 1912 onwards, so 1915, his theory was rejected by the scientists of the world then because they could not come up with an idea as to what could have caused, what powerful forces, what could be so global in its power to cause continents to drift thousands of miles apart. And so his theory was resisted and rejected at least up until in the 1960s where a new theory came to the fore called the continent the sorry the 
plate tectonics theory, which scientists today now believe is the reason for continents breaking up in the first place. They think they now have the explanation as to what forces could have broken continents and separated them slowly over time to where they are today. So that theory, we will get into presently. So keep in mind that the biggest problem that Alfred Wegener faced in the 1915 period was, as you see on screen, he could not explain what force could be so powerful enough to cause continents to break up and drift thousands of miles apart to their present positions. And this now is where the theory of plate tectonics comes in. Now, before we move on to this theory, the second theory under this, this, uh, this theme of study, let's do a quick summary of what we learned so far about the theory of continental drift. And there you see on screen a quick summary of the basic idea as to what this theory is about. So you can pause the screen and read and reread until you get the idea. Keep in mind that those words that are highlighted in bold type are key, very, very important in the study. So let me read for you what is on screen. Alfred Wegener, a meteorologist and climatologist of Germany, was the founder of the theory of continental drift. Between the years 1910 and 1912 is when he came up with this theory. A theory which states that the seven continents, as we know them today, over millions of years, gradually broke away from one supercontinent or one original landmass, which he called Pangaea, term which means all earth, and slowly drifted to their present positions. He first got his idea from observing that the continents of South America and Africa, being opposite to each other, seemed to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. He then theorized that they must have been one landmass and broke apart and separated. After doing studies of the rocks and fossils, among other things, of the opposite coastlines of South America and Africa, he came to the conclusion that they once, they once formed one landmass and he assumed that all the other continents together might have also been together. Let me read that again. Read that again, and he assumed that all the other continents might have also been together and separated over millions of years. He theorized that the supercontinent broke up gradually into two groups of continents Laurasia, remember that word, very important to remember, to the north, and Gondwanaland to the south. Next, very important concept to remember. And then eventually became the seven continents we know today. He, however, could not figure out what forces were powerful enough to cause continents to drift. This theory led or later led to the development of the plate tectonics theory, which was formulated by other scientists in the 1960s. So that basically summarizes in capsule form the continental drift theory. And quick reminder, there we see 
moving from left to right from top we have the continent of the supercontinent of Pangaea which he thought existed some 200 to 250 million years ago which then broke up into the groups called Laurasia to the north Gondwanaland to the south which then further spread gradually to become the continents as we know them today the seven continents of the world and hence his theory of the origin of continents and oceans in theory the continental drift theory we now come to the plate tectonics theory which on screen I have summarized for you so you can pause the screen and read the basic summary ideas in this theory I read for you Harry Hess who this time was an American geologist. Geologist is somebody who specializes in the study of the rocks and minerals of the earth. Was one of the main scientists. So he was not the only, but was one of the main scientists who developed the theory of plate tectonics in the 1960s onwards. This theory states that the earth's crust, as we learned earlier, properly called the lithosphere, is divided into several segments or jigsaw puzzle like slabs called plates in other words the outer layer there's the dry land on which we live as well as the ocean floors continents and oceans and sea floors together form an outer shell of rocks called a lithosphere but it's broken up into jigsaw like pieces fitted together like a jigsaw puzzle and these sections of the outer shell of rocks of the of the earth these are called plates these plates are continent to read which are found below the continents and sea floors and which slowly move in different directions slowly of course at a rate of two to four centimeters Per year you read some science books they will tell you that it's anywhere between one to two inches per year on average or anywhere between two and four centimeters per year this is the rate at which your fingernails uh, tend to grow so this is a very slow motion and I continue to read so these motions of the plates in different directions at that rate result in earthquakes volcanoes and volcanic activities folding of rocks in other words rocks bend upwards and downwards to form valleys and mountains faulting of rocks in other words the rocks crack and shift out of place in sections of the crust this theory also causes the sea floor or parts of the seafloor to spread outwards this is called seafloor spreading and of course this now is a force that Vegna was 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 trying to search for but could not come up with that force and now it is believed that this force where plates sections of the cross break and drift apart slowly is what is responsible for the slow drift of continents I continue to read these plates which fit together in a jigsaw like fashion or like a cracked eggshell making up the outer shell of rocks or the lithosphere are believed to move slowly over a layer of molten rock which we call magma found in the upper mantle so below the crust when you go down in the earth there's a layer just in the upper part of the mantle of molten rock 
where the molten rock slowly moves around and drags parts of the crust above it in different directions, hence plates. This upper section of the mantle is called, there you see it on screen, make sure you know that term, the asphenosphere, and is believed to have the magma in the upper part of the crust slowly moving around in a circular fashion, a motion called convection currents. This movement results in plates above the asthenosphere being dragged in different directions and of course the continents along with them according to the theory. Now as the plates push into each other or what we call they converge or at some points plates separate or what we call they diverge or sometimes plates or sections of the crust, crust slide past each other earthquakes from the shifting, volcanoes, magma flowing out through the cracks onto the seafloor and onto the surface, pressure causing rocks to bend and fold upwards and downwards to form mountains and valleys, and the cracking and shifting of the rocks in sections called faulting. In some sections, the seafloor spreads outwards And of course, because the plates which have the continents above them are moving in their different directions, scientists believe that the continents drift. That is the basic idea of the theory of plate tectonics. And of course, today we have the, the plate maps of the world. Please make sure that you study carefully the names of the sections of the crust which fit together like a jigsaw puzzle and please know carefully or study carefully the names of the various sections of the crust some are named after the continents which are above them some are named after oceans above them some are named even though they may have only ocean or they may have parts of a land mass they have other names so we have for instance the caribbean plate because of course the caribbean sea is above it north american plate because the continent of north america covers much of this section of the crust african plate because the african continent is above this section of the crust and so forth pacific plate because the pacific ocean is above this section of the crust. This is the theory which developed in the 1960s, which is now believed to be the reason why continents drift apart. Because as the sections of the crust, which fit together like cracked eggshell, as these sections move, there you see on screen, the theory explaining how the sections of the crust move in different directions and so as the continents move in different directions slowly over time on top of these sections of the crust called plates then the plates the continents rather are believed to have moved and so just like when you boil an egg and you over boil the egg and it's cracked up but it is still one whole, whole egg shell around but cracked in sections, that's the idea of what the plates are thought to be. Continents on top of these different cracked sections of the crust moving slowly in different directions. And therefore, as the sections are believed to have moved over millions of years slowly, the continents move together from one land mass to their present positions. Keep in mind, this is a theory, a proposed idea of the scientists who believe that this is how the continents came about. At the end of this video, I will tell you 
what my personal views are on these two theories. But for the time being, I'm explaining to you what the scientists have proposed and today is widely accepted among scientists. Not all scientists accept these theories as they are explained in full, but that is what is today the common theories among the scientists. Now, if you look on screen, you will notice the basic idea in the plate tectonics theory is that below the crust, we have the molten material, which we know to be magma, in the upper part of the mantle called the asthenosphere. Notice the arrows. The theory is that there's a circular motion of the molten material, which they have called convection currents. And as the molten material moves around, it pulls on the crust above it, dragging the various sections or plates in different directions. So in some sections, the crust will be cracked and pulled apart and molten material fills the space as the sections of the crust moves apart. And this is where, if it happens in the ocean, it is believed that the seafloor gradually spreads outwards as the material flows up between the space, hardens and form new seafloor. And that is why it is called seafloor spreading. Of course, in some sections, parts of the crust would be pushed together, as you can see to the left of the screen. And it is here that one section, once one plate heavier than the other will sink below a process called subduction, forcing that section of the crust to crumple upwards and downwards, to bend upwards to form mountains, to bend downwards to form valleys, and of course trenches in the seafloor. And it is here it is believed that molten material sometimes escape to the surface through cracks to form volcanoes. So in some sections of the crust, plates are coming together, while in some sections, plates are moving apart. And in other sections, of course, plates are believed to be sliding past, past each other. The theory of plate tectonics. Now, I have also summarized for you the basic idea of types of plates, the types of the sections of the crust which move in different directions slowly and in relation to each other they are categorized into three groups of plates. So as you can see on screen you can pause the screen and read over and over until you get the ideas. Plates of the crust I'm reading are categorized based on either what is above them or based on their movements in relation to each other. Plates like the Pacific and Indian plates are called oceanic plates because of oceans being mainly above them. And plates like the North American and Eurasian plates are called continental plates because of continents being mainly above them. Plates which push into each other are called converging plates. Converge to come together. Converging plates. Plates which move apart or separate are called diverging plates. Diverge to move apart. While plates which slide past each other are called transform plates. The boundary or margin or cracks 
between plates, which is where earthquakes largely occur because of the shifting of rocks. These boundaries or margins or cracks between these different types of plates are named based on the movements of the plates at these margins or boundaries. Where plates converge or push into each other, the plate margins between them, the cracks or the boundaries between them are called convergent. Notice the difference in wording here. Convergent or destructive plate margins. In other words, the cracks between plates which push into each other are called convergent or destructive plate margins. Destructive, of course, because the plate, the, 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 the crust is being pushed into the crust being pushed into each other at these boundaries and you end up with cracking, bending or what we call folding and subduction. One part of the crust sink under, and as a, under the other and is absorbed into the mantle below and hence destructive. Where plates separate or move apart the margin between them are called divergent notice the term divergent or constructive in other words the molten material flows up between hards and form new crust and hence the term constructive because new crust is being created or being constructed by the by the upflowing of magma and the hardening to form new crust and finally, where plates push past or slide past each other, obviously this is where earthquakes would occur, the margin between them are called transform or neutral or passive plate margins. And there we see on screen a summary of the three types of plates. To the left, plates sliding past each other, transform plate margins would be between those plates. Plate separating would be divergent or constructive plate margin. And to the right, plates which come together, convergent or destructive plate margins. This basically is the theory of plate tectonics and its relationship to the theory of continental drift. So when you combine what is in the first video, continents and plate theory and introduction, and in this video, more details as to what the theories of continental drift and plate tectonics are all about. It is my hope that with further reading, you'll be better able to explain according to the scientists what these two theories are all about. Now, I promised you that at the end of this video, I would have told you what my personal views are on these two theories. Now, after years of study and reading and looking at various proposals of various scientists, I will admit that these two theories are the most commonly accepted and widely accepted among the scientists, but not all scientists accept these theories. I personally believe that the continents today exist not because of millions of years of drift from each other, but simply for another reason, a global catastrophic event that separated the continents not over millions of years, 
but within a short space of time. But of course, this video is not so much to delve into my personal views, but to simply explain what the commonly proposed and accepted views of the scientists what these views are. Thank you for listening. I hope that these two videos were helpful in your study of these two theories. The theories of continental drift and the theory of plate tectonics. Thanks for listening.